Welcome friends to the showdown. We have here three 200 watt solar panels. One of them is the Blue Eddy PV200. The second one is the SP033 uh, All Powers. And this one is the newest model SP035. I just made this video the other day regarding this one. What the goal today is, is to test out with the same charge controller, same battery, same charge controller type, same battery, and the same sunlight conditions, one after another, and see which one gives the most power, and possibly even do what's called a shade test. I'm gonna take my t-shirt and let's say throw it over like one of the panels randomly, and see what kind of uh, power it gets. So we have the condensers, the solar panels, the test equipment, this is pretty cool. This is a built hard, 100 amp hour, 12 volt battery, BILT hard, uh, lithium iron phosphate. The connectors that we have here connected is, um, I put automotive fuses, 30 amps. These are all 40 amps, set to uh, circuit break at 40 amps, and uh, made these Anderson connectors. This battery of power doesn't come with the Andersons, but Andersons are pretty simple to do. And they look beautiful and are easy to connect and disconnect. This is the charge controller that we're gonna be using. Oh, let's do the fuel. Oh yeah, that feels good. I saved that just for you guys. Could have done that. Oh, and then another peel. That's the back of the controller. So I could do a 12 and 24 volt. It's set to the 12 volt. Maximum open circuit voltage this can take is uh, 30 volts. None of these are over that. This one's probably like 25, but we're also gonna test the open circuit voltage too. So here's another one that we could peel the sticker off. Boom. And then peel this off. You, you, you will notice that it says 13.2 volts. Uh, this 100% is not correct because uh, I believe it can uh, absorb a lot more power um, because the charge is like 14.2. But we'll see it's going to be the same so same battery so we don't have the impedance uh, difference we have the same solar charge controller and each one is going to be connected to its individual mppt and we're going to be able to see on three different watt meters so we don't get confused um what are the different controls coming in so i'm going to set these right up and what we're going to do is first find out the uh voltage open circuit during let's say a pretty sunny day so be right back all right friends so here are the contenders we have the blue eddy pv200 at the front i would say out of the build quality this would be the best one it's the most rigid the, the nicest feeling the ctfe is just nice but also this is the most expensive out of the bunch but the what what you you, get, you definitely get what you pay for this thing feels really nice and quality. I like this handle. That's pretty decent. Um, I also like that this cord is nice and this is probably the longest one of them all. And this cord is pretty nice. So the PV200 has open circuit voltage for me at 24.43. So probably it's a 25 volt open circuit. So don't connect the power bank that says 24 volts that it could take. Maybe. The second one is the sp33 this sp33 is also 200 watt we're contending three 200 watt panels that's fine look at the doggy so this sp033 is let's see um is 20.74 volts open circuit so technically this one, you could connect to any solar bank, including the smaller ones, the 300 watts, 600 watts, and things like this. Usually the 800 and up uh, can take up to 30 volts. So this one you can't do with the smaller one, you need a slightly bigger bank. And the last one, this is the SP035. Very interesting. Um, look at the size difference. Both are 200 watt panels, but this one is much larger. You could actually see it. And uh, let's see. 
and there's no shade falling on any one of them so so build quality wise this is pretty actually decent i like the small compact size but we'll see what kind of power it gives because when i was doing the test on it it was getting 150 watts um so voltage open circuit on the sp035 is 2235 uh Maybe it's 23 and a half. So I'm just doing it with three different meters. I, I suppose the, there could be a difference with them, but I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure that uh, voltage is voltage and it could tell the correct ones. So now let's connect each one, one by one, and we'll see what each power has. So the Blue 80 has the blue controller. This SP033 has this black one. And this one, it has like the slightly white, you know, kind of like interesting one. Um, so let's connect it and see what, what values it gets. So are you guys exci as excited about the results as I am? Well, I'm pretty excited. So let me just first tell you the total volt, uh, wattage coming in from three solar panels that are 200 watts each. So maximum theoretical optimal limit is uh, if we didn't have all these uh, things called chemtrails, maybe it would be better output. Anyways, um, long story short, we're getting 400 watts even plus 29 amps from the three together so let's see what each one is doing so notice everything is correct there's no extra shadow shadowless slightly hazy sun and so let's see what the blue eddy is producing mind you this is before the solar charge controller so this probably takes like 5 10 watts to produce the electricity so this probably drops by a few watts so this probably at 150 watts by the time it converts it's probably doing 140 watts but let's just take a look at look at the raw number that it could produce because that's probably the number that they want us to look at anyway so 150 watts for the blue eddy that's pretty good at the same time we have 146 watts for the sp033 great contender and the SP035 is doing 134. So, Bluetti is number one. This guy is close to number two. And putting them all three together, we can see all, them, all of them together. So the 10% difference. What I'm actually liking is that the all powers is slightly smaller so i would probably take the 10 watt hit and maybe just get an extra one because of that i like that compact size the spa 33 is doing a pretty good job that one you might be able to get discounted and the most expensive the blue eddy i don't know is the extra 510 watts worth the extra 200 dollar investment for it i don't know it's up to you the build qualities are pretty nice so let's get closer to each one of them What I think the Blue Eddy might shine on is I've seen people do um, a partial shading test. And um, perhaps that's what we could do right now. Let's say half of the panel gets shaded. This is actually a pretty easy test to do. We'll just take this guy and fold it in. So half is shaded. We take this guy and fold it in. We take this guy and fold it in. So let's say half the panels are shaded. Well, what kind of results are we getting? Which one is the best at partial shading? Let's say half your panel got shaded. What do we have here? Results side by side. So the blue eddy with half shaded, you're still producing 72 watts. The SP033 half shaded, you're producing 69. And this one is producing, the SP035 is producing slightly less. It's 62 watts. So the SP033 and the SP and the PV200 are pretty equal in the performance. However, still this one, I like that it's smaller. Okay, so partial shading, half the panels even come up and it produces still half the electricity, which is really good. This is one of those things I realized watching people uh, doing the solar panel reviews. They have one solar generator and they're plugging into it the same one 
And by the time like a, a shade rolls around, you're not seeing them side by side. So the reason why I'm saying this is probably bad for a test is because what you're doing is you're connecting to a battery bank at different states of charge. <laughs> so what happens is that when the battery bank is almost full, no matter how much solar power you could generate, it's not gonna take it. It's like a bucket that's full. Once the bucket is full, there's a system in there called the BMS, battery management system, and it keeps it from being overcharged past a certain voltage. So it's just gonna stop accepting the charge. So when you have at least one battery bank together and separate MPPT controllers, so what we have is three separate independent systems because I'm using three separate MPPT controllers here. Um, also considering this, this actually might be a better system for everybody else to like kind of copy and you know, uh, copying is the greatest, you know, flattery. So basically put, if you think about it, 100 amp hour battery bank, let's say it's 350. And let's say each panel is like 300 each uh, on, on average. So that one, I believe I paid like 240. This one I might've paid 220. This one I probably paid 400 and change a couple years back. I just wanted a quality that would work. However, we're noticing that the SP033 is producing almost just as much. They're pretty much equivalent. Yes, the build quality is nicer, but I'd rather buy two of these panels and produce 300 watts together than just one for 440. And yeah, spend a little bit of money. And perhaps maybe all the 200 watt contenders are similar. What I'm loving about the SP035 is that look. That looks nice and I like the compactness. That's nice. Look at it in the background. So by lengthwise, it's shorter. These individual panels are short. This is, I think, a very, very good panel if you really think about it. So because I'm doing this test on separate MPPT controllers, let's just check it out. We're actually getting a true test. Even if this battery bank was filled up, they would both be producing, let's say, close to zero all at once. However, it's a little bit discharged. So let's see all of them side by side. 147, 143, and 135. Okay, that's pretty decent. So that's my thoughts this far. Um, a clear winner. Uh, perhaps maybe if I, if I looked at it like this, I would actually rather have more solar panels like this because um, not everybody's gonna say this, but inside each one of this is glass. So if a fat, a fat person's butt falls on one of these, it could crack it and produce a lot less electricity. Um, so I'd rather have the ability to, let's say one of my three panels gets cracked, I still get at least have two left or one is going to produce a little bit less and that's why it's important to have separate mpt controllers all right so let's do a total count up so let's say these controllers are probably like around 80 dollars each uh so that's 240 so 240 let's just count these as all as 250 so 250 for the controllers 250 each that's a thousand thousand three fifty for with this uh, with that and then buying this um also fuses fuses are probably like 15 bucks and this is probably like 40 bucks what this does is that you put this ring on it and it tells you the the watts coming in and out so what the benefit of this oh we disconnected one always connect the um, battery pack first because without the battery pack uh this thing goes into an error oh and this guy got disconnected oops Oh no, yeah, that's right. Gotta have it connected. Um, so with the benefit of this guy is I have six ports, each one being able to handle at 10 AWG, 30 amps of electricity. So 30 amps times six is I could technically get 
input up to 180 amps into this without over amping it. I'm also safe and secure because each one of these connections has this 40, 40 amp fuse. So what that means is if, they, if there's a short circuit somewhere, what short circuit does is that when you connect two wires together, it creates the maximum amperage that there is. So in here, the battery management system probably would shut off after whatever certain amounts of uh, short circuit amps. However, I'd rather have that protection of 40 amps. And this kind of stuff has been in cars for years. It can move around. It's very nice. So two separate ones, and these are separate terminals. Screw in M8 terminals. M8 means they're eight millimeters, and most batteries that have the screw in terminal have the M8 terminals. So these are nice because they're nice and copper. The one that it comes with is just a screw. So I have a high quality connection and better than the bus bar. You're gonna see the other people with their solar systems, they're plugging in lugs. You can't easily connect it and disconnect it. So I get all the benefits of a solar generator from this system, minus um, the limitation on the ampage that it could receive. So for example, I have a thousand watt UPES solar generator. It can do probably eight and a half to maximum 10 amps, depending on the condition, input into the port. So eight and a half amps maximum. So now all of a sudden you're worried about the voltages and you can't do over 30. So this one could do 30, uh, up to 30 volts, and it could do up to 20 amps into the thing. And it has to have like at least minimum 15 volts. So with each one of these panels, it works. And on this, uh, each individual MPPT controller, the benefit of this is that, is when you, um, the redundancy, the redundancy is nice. So what we're talking about is a 1250 watt bank with all this, let's say $1,400, $1,500. However, if you want to get a solar generator, those are much more expensive. Probably a thousand watt would be like 1250 and it wouldn't have the same connection ability. So we're talking about 30 amp ports and then you could connect multiple of these ports to let's say you have um, what's called an inverter to create AC electricity out of this. So what this allows is quick and easy connect and disconnect. You have a fuse, so you're protected. And inside each one of these MPPT charge controllers, there's also over wattage, over voltage, short circuit stuff. Um, so there's a protection level here. There's a protection level with the fuse. There's also a protection level with the BMS. Um, I mean, that's really awesome. And what you could do is, let's say you wanna charge a laptop you could create multiple laptop ports. They have those cigarette lighter things. So you just buy an adapter that converts this to a cigarette lighter port. And because this is 30 amps and the cigarette lighter is not gonna take more than 10 amps, you could probably connect two cigarette or three cigarette lighter ports, each with 100 watt charging abilities, USB-C to type C chargers. So with the 12 volt, it's the most compatible and used everywhere. There's billions and trillions of devices. And um, this is actually pretty convenient and show me a solar generator that has more than two inputs i probably don't know uh many of them there's an upes that has multiple mppt controllers in it i've seen them but, but that's the 1800 watt one uh, that's pretty decent however what uh, what's my negative about solar generators is that when they're charging they have a fan going you could hear a noise in it this is completely silent this is fanless and then you could say, oh, because it has a fan, it has cooling. Well, um, I like how this other YouTuber put it, uh, John Daniel. Uh, shout out to him, John Daniel on YouTube. He has really great YouTube uh, solar reviews. So anyways, um, I, I forget what I was saying. So let's get to the next one. So I remembered. Okay, so what John Daniel put was very w good point. He was showing a cheap solar charge controller that has uh, a fan on it. And he said basically this, that an MPPT controller that has a fan on it, you wanna stay away from. That the better quality ones, even, even in price, even if they're cheap, have 
large big heat sinks and then if you have for example one that has a fan in it chances are over the years that fan could fail and you could have uh, an overheating issue however if you have an MPPT controller without any fan on it you could actually not worry about the situation so the example would be the EP Ever solar charge controller. It's a one large aluminum heatsink. Or what is the best of the best is the Victrons. The Victron solar charge controllers, they have like nice big heatsinks depending on the ampage that you're putting through them. So of course the 15 amps is gonna be a smaller with a smaller heatsink because it doesn't generate as much heat. So the more amps go, that go through a controller, the more heat that they generate. So what I like about these controllers over here is that these are in a sweet spot um i'm actually not feeling any heat generated from this or barely like it's barely warm it's probably more warmed up from the sun so let's do a quick check into the wattages and see what's going on here okay so sp35 127 this one is 133 and the Blue 80 140. So long story short, think about on a solar generator. Yes, it has a fan. Yes, it turns on when it's, especially when it's uh, charging up. And that's one of the things that I like about battery packs is that they don't turn on the stuff while charging up. So the stuff that I figured out with this is that specifically with MPPT controllers like this, I don't know about the Blue, a Blue Eddy yet. I haven't seen it if you could charge it with like a 12 or a 14 volt however long story short you could take this let's say 20 amp controller connect two dell 200 watt, watt power bricks um you want to connect two of them even though this is like a 240 or 280 um because it's going to over amp it so if you put two in parallel that's why when making this i connected two ports because the idea with this is that i could connect two 200 watt panels or two 100 watt panels very easily this is the beauty of anderson and creating your own connect connectors it gives you infinite flexibility and much easier and much safer you know there's no exposed wires here so no child is going to touch this and get the stuff also at 12 volts you really can't hurt yourself it's the 48 volt systems that apparently could kill you shout outs again to john daniel he he taught me a lot um yeah so what is the advantage to this is that it's scalable so let's say if i wanted to put two battery banks together i could take these two ones and let's say i want to have a 60 amp connection between them i would connect two ports to the other one to the two ports to the other one and then it has kind of like a connection between the two and you still have four ports in each left over so you have a 60 amp connection between the two and then you you could also uh, use the charge controller, split this up into two ports, and have another 230. Long story short, this is a much more convenient and scalable option. Yes, it's more expensive. However, I don't have to worry about a fan going out on my um, on my battery bank on the solar generator. And what I found also with the solar generators is that when they're on, it seems they're less efficient than other systems. It seems that when the inverter is on, my Ukitel, it it has like a parasitic load. I don't know what the parasit, what the load on idle for just having the inverter on. However, it could be as much as 200 watts an hour. Because when I turn the inverter off, same load lasts much longer. Um, so personally, instead of spending a thousand watts for a 2,000 watt Ukitel. There's a brand called EcoWorthy, and they have these uh, 12 volt battery banks, 150 amp hours, for like $300 a piece. I've seen it, I've bought them as low as $270 a piece. So 12 volt banks, 150 amp hours, that's 1980, 1.98 kilowatt hours. So I'd rather, for the $1,000, take four of them and have uh, close to eight kilowatts of energy. So which one is the winner guys? Come on, put your comments down below. Like what
what do you think so personally i love the quality of the blue eddy i'm happy i bought it um i actually have a pair of these pair of those and just one of those however putting them side by side and seeing the solar generation perhaps maybe the ideal would be you just take a pair of these bad boys and because it's doing 130 watts at pretty decent light i could connect to one charge controller the 20 amp two of these solar panels and get an easy what 250 watts charge that's pretty decent and uh so i don't have to you know, duplicate uh, these solar charge controllers and this is what i like about this one because regularly on a solar charge controller is that you have to have all these extra fuses and all this other stuff but notice i already do have a fuse on that end however that already has a short circuit overload protection so that's pretty awesome um so my hands are maybe with that one i like that i could actually carry that easier just size wise so these are slightly wide so this is probably the same size that one feels like it's the highest efficiency however it still makes like 10 watts less so for for the size uh, my hands are on the sp35 it's the newest greatest maybe perhaps it's the newest greatest but stay tuned we shall have more comparisons in the future uh thumbs up subscribe comment and let's have fun together let's have it this is a really awesome system this is what i'm liking about this is let's say I, I live in the city so i can't i don't have like a backyard to set things up so literally that backpack i threw in my back and these three panels i was able to carry it i'm thinking maybe i could get another panel another sp35 and take four panels outside um and get more than a 400 watts charge so let's see what's the total from from the three combined 357 so maybe all together if i had a fourth one it'll be close to 500 watts and this bank is 100 amp hours 100 amp hours at 12.8 voltage will be 1280 watt hours so at a 400 watt charge that would be probably around three hours with these three solar panels to charge it up probably two and a half if i had a fourth one however this is probably the best test you'll ever get last quick check into the voltages and wattages so the blue eddy 134 sp33 129 and this one is 122 so see you guys in the next one bye bye